Hello everybody and welcome back to another unofficial Windows version video. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at a very unique unofficial Windows version called Windows XP C. And this was actually brought to my attention over on my form site osforms.net by a guy named Cosmo who's actually one of the developers of this project and we're going to be taking a look at this project in today's video I'm going to be going fully in depth and showing you guys all of the features of this project what it has to offer and it's a really really cool project because it actually attempts to bring one of the major features from Windows Longhorn called WinFS to Windows XP. Along with that, it also adds some third-party programs like VLC Media Player, as you can see that he uh, mentions up here, CCleaner, the Windows Sidebar, and there is more as well. This is actually based off of Windows XP Professional, but it does include a lot of uh, Vista visual styles, and there's a lot of ways that you can uh, customize this to your liking. It is a very nice project. I can tell that they've definitely put a lot of work into this. They actually have a uh, Discord server if you want to uh, join and actually chat with some of the developers of this project, you can do that from his link right here. And these are some of the screenshots of the OS itself. So you can see that in this one right here, we have a little bit of a different theme, uh, a few different uh, Vista icons and visual elements in here. We also have the Windows sidebar that has been brought to, uh, back to Windows XP. Uh, you can see that they've changed Winver with their own custom banner, which is pretty nice. And it also includes Opera as well as the default web browser. And I should mention that all of these screenshots right here are actually from an earlier build of Windows XP C. The development team has actually made their first public release of Milestone 8 of this project. What's cool about this one, and this is the one that we're going to be taking a look at in this video, is that it, it includes features like Aeroglass Transparency, as well as Aeroglass Toast Notifications, which is what these are called over here. This was a feature from Windows Longhorn. They have implemented that in this build of Windows XP C. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at Windows XP C the first publicly available build. Now I've gone ahead and skipped through the initial setup portion where it goes through and copies the files over to the Windows installation folders and all of that. You guys know that blue screen that you guys have seen if you ever installed an NT based version of Windows prior to Vista. Because it was essentially ex exactly the same, there wasn't really anything changed. When you get to this portion of the setup right here, you're going to notice that there are a lot of changes. This whole uh, setup portion has been redesigned. There's a new background. There's a new logo up here that says Microsoft slash Cosmo, which is one of the developers names. It has a Windows XP C and they have actually implemented their own text in here as well. They've actually changed all of that default text that was included with XP. And now it actually tells you some specific features about XP C rather than just XP in general. So you see that right here, it's talking about compatibility with standard Windows programs. What's really cool about this build is it also has a feature called All Key for Applications, which allows you to run not all, but some Windows Vista made applications. So applications that were specifically designed for Windows Vista and above, um, that weren't designed for Windows XP, you can actually run some of those programs using that program, kind of like Kernel X was for Windows 95. And it just goes through and it talks about a lot of different features. I'm not going to go through and read every single one of them, but you guys can probably pause the video and read one if you want to. But it is very nice. And this is just the beginning of what has been customized. They've definitely, as I've said, put a lot of work into this to customize it and bring some really cool features from Windows Longhorn, like WinFS and the Windows Longhorn login screen and those visual styles, the Windows sidebar, Aeroglass transparency from Windows Longer. There's a lot of really cool features packed in here. They also contain a lot of documentation as well as it says right here, which was perfect timing to pop up as I just started to uh, talk about that. But there are a few different uh, readme text files and uh, just great resources that you can read if you want to learn more about some of the things that are offered in here. All right, so we're still in the setup phase of Windows XP C here, and you can see that we've got a couple of pop-up windows. We have this one right here, which is the WinRAR installation, and right behind that we have a installation for Opera. So we're going to go ahead and just go through these. We're going to click on Install, 
and click on OK and done and then we're going to go through this one here i believe is so yeah this is vista drive icon i'm not sure if the developers are going to attempt to make this setup process here automated i did not read any of that in his uh, form post from uh, cosmo but i mean it could be uh, a possibility for a future build of this so we're just going to go through the uh, Vista Drive icon set up here. Okay, so before we get to Opera, we just got another pop-up for Microsoft WinFS Beta 1. So this is what I, that I was talking about where Microsoft had actually released a beta version of WinFS to developers. I believe this is it right here because I don't think this is anything third party. For the documentation that I looked at for this, it is from Microsoft, so it is kind of interesting. Now here it tries to run a uh, en winfs beta one refresh.exe and it says that it can't find period so we're just going to go ahead and skip through that and opera is kind of funny here because when you install it, it will actually open up opera and you can browse the web while it's still setting up in the background and yeah so it just pops up right here so you can literally you know start browsing the web i don't know if our network driver is installed actually i don't even have networking enabled but I mean, it's just kind of funny that, that this opens up right on um, the setup screen. I wonder if we can go, like go to our C drive and so yeah, we can browse the C drive while it's, you know, still setting up everything, which is kind of funny. So it's got about nine minutes left. Let's see what happens if we minimize this. Is it going to, yeah, it's just going to go down here. You'll see here that they have changed the login screen around. Also of note, we totally skipped the out of box experience. There is no OOBE in this version of Windows, but we do have, like I said, a lot of Longhorn visual elements. And this is one of them right here. This is a recreation of one of the Longhorn uh, login screens. So here's where it looks like it tries to run a program called arrow.exe, which I can probably safely assume is the arrow um, desktop composition engine. So yeah, I don't I don't think we're getting anywhere um, with this right here. So we're gonna go ahead and close out of that. And now we actually, you can see right off the bat, we have a personalized theme. We have a different theme. I don't know if the Luna theme is still in here. I assume it is because it is the default theme, but they do set a new theme for us, which is pretty nice. You can see that it, that it says setting up uh, personalized settings for Windows sidebar, which is very interesting. I believe this is the uh, sidebar that's in here is straight from windows vista because that's what it looks like i mean maybe they've they've done some patching to allow it to run on xp or they might be using that um vista uh i forget the name of the tool at the moment but that tool that they have in here that allows you to run windows vista programs so the first thing that i want to do is actually well i, I did run this um daemon tools light program which appears to be updating virtual devices and it's found a new piece of hardware down here glass toast slash glass toast.exe so this should open up the yep these are those cool um notifications that will pop in on the side it still doesn't appear that arrow is working yeah i don't see us having but yeah see that is nice that uh glass toast basically takes over the regular um windows notifications which is cool but i'm trying to figure out how to enable arrow glass transparency because he said that that should work after setup at least that's what it says in his post um one thing we do have is a couple of different themes i assume most of these are just custom themes but you see we've got all of these different themes uh the, the regular one is named my theme nl but there's olympics os osm standard but yeah i, I don't know what the deal is with the arrow glass transparency because i believe it's supposed to work um wallpapers they have bundled a ton of different wallpapers in here some of them from longhorn builds even uh wallpapers from the professional developers conference 2003 so that's cool but there's just a a, a ton of different um wallpapers in here um appearances where we can go in and change um our color scheme you see that we have a ton of different um color schemes uh or windows and button styles for this one theme uh, Metro Zune, Longhorn DWM. Yeah, this literally looks exactly like what I took a look at in my Metro XP video. Uh, Plex style, uh, Slate style, Watercolor style as well. So there's a lot of um, pre-release official Windows themes in here, which is cool. 
Well, let's go ahead and set it to Longhorn. There have been some changes to the computer properties dialog. You can see here that it's been stretched out and they've actually changed their version text up here to say Windows XP C Ultimate version 2019 Service Pack 3. So taking a look at the programs that are installed here, the first one that pops out to me is Vista Drive icon. This is the program that when you go into my computer here, which another minor change, they've also taken away the my prefix on everything to make it look a little more like Vista. They've also applied a Vista icon pack and they've also, or they also are using Vista Drive Icon, which is this program that gives you the percentage used indicator on the actual drive icon like you would expect from Vista. Um, going back in here, we have uh, VLC Media Player, which is a pretty good program, uh, Notepad++. Games, it doesn't look like they've added any games um, themselves. These are all the regular XP games. Um, Daemon Tools Lite is that program that I launched at the beginning. We have CCleaner. Under accessories, they've, for some reason, given Notepad and Paint the name XPC after it. I believe it's the same program. I don't really um, notice any uh, differences in here. But one thing that is really cool is if we go into Help and About, this is basically like um, running Winverse. You can see that what they've done here, and I'll actually just go ahead and open Winver here to show you these side by side because they are exactly the same but what's cool about this is not only have they changed the banner up here they've also actually given this its own build string so they're actually going by their own custom um, build string rather than using whatever microsoft has in here so you see that it says microsoft windows windows xpc version 0.75232619 mls6.main this is their own build string here. Now, normally, if you go into an XP Winver dialog, it's gonna say Windows XP Service Pack 3 build 2600. So yeah, that I just thought was really cool as I have not seen that done before in any of these other custom Windows versions. But I don't know why they're calling this XPC edition. Maybe they've changed a couple of things. Um, but I mean, it's, it's like notepad, but when you open up Paint, I, I don't really think Paint is, is uh, any different either. We go ahead and open up Paint XPC. It literally just looks like the regular, you know, Paint program. So those are the only modifications from in here. Most of these other programs, or I guess all of them, are all just regular Windows XP programs, except for the Windows sidebar, which has been added in. And speaking of the Windows sidebar, let me just go through here and make sure there's nothing else that is new. So, no, it doesn't look like it. But like I said, this literally looks to be the regular Windows Vista sidebar. I can't find any, like, indication that this is a third-party program. I believe this is the genuine Vista sidebar. We have all of these gadgets here. When you go into the plus uh, sign menu, it opens up the gadget gallery, which has all of the same default gadgets, or at least most of them, you know, the CPU meter, um, I think there are a couple of custom ones like this uh, drive info. And what's really interesting is jojo.org. Jojo.org was the website that um, Longhorn Reloaded was hosted on. So they have that in here. I don't really know what this widget does, but I guess it's like an RSS feed for jojo.org, which isn't going to work anymore because, you know, the site is down and it's been down for years but there are a couple of ones in here that I haven't seen before. I would love to hear from the uh, developers on that because I actually don't really know, but I'm gonna take a guess that it is the genuine program because I can't really see any um, signs that this is a third party program. If you go into uh, properties, it's got all of the regular links. Like when I click on this link here, it will open up a Microsoft website. When I go into the uh, gadgets menu here and click on get more gadgets online, um, at least it should open up in Opera. So yeah, go.microsoft.com. All right, so I wanted to uh, touch on a couple of things here. I've been browsing around the OS. I'm currently in the Program Files folder. And you see that we've got a good amount of different programs that are installed. But one thing that I did notice is if we go into the Windows Sidebar folder right here. This is actually the genuine official version of the Windows Sidebar from Microsoft. You can see right here it says Microsoft Corporation. However, there is also, if we go into the vistaexperience.org folder, 
Inside here, there's a program called Gadget Installer. I think this is just a, a, a tool for installing third-party gadgets, but I did want to save WinFS for last, and that's what we're going to be getting into now. So you can see on the C drive here, we have this folder called WinFS Beta 1. If we go in here, there's this Windows Installer package. I believe we already have it installed, but let's just double check here to make sure. Actually, no, we don't have it installed. This is a different installer. I think that that install shield wizard may have just been unpacking it. But we'll go ahead and go through this installer here. And I guess this is the icon they were using for WinFS, at least at the time. So there we go. WinFS Beta 1 has been successfully installed. We'll go ahead and close out of that. And it asks us to restart. So, of course, we're going to say yes. So before we get into that, I do want to show you guys the README documentation. As I said, there is a lot of um, developer documentation straight from the people who made this that gives you a lot of information about what features are in it, what you can expect, etc. So this is the uh, README.html document, which basically just introduces you to Windows XPC. And what's also cool is they have this file a bug report page where you can actually go to this uh, web address right here and submit a bug report if you guys see one when you're using this to the developers directly which is pretty cool uh, it tells about all key for applications and it has some different additions as well which as far as i know are still in uh, development they haven't been released yet so they are working on a legacy edition and an x64 edition and here are all of uh, the credits down here for all the uh, different people that helped to work on this and it has another contact link down here so we're going to close out of that so winfs this um package that it installed in here is essentially the software development kit this is not a final edition of winfs but it basically allowed developers to start using winfs learn a little bit more about it and actually start to create their own programs which used the apis that microsoft has uh, available in here to use if we go into uh, release notes this is where that you can basically if you weren't really sure before this is an official thing this is I believe a um, HTML file taken from one of the Microsoft websites because it has that uh, design language going on up here maybe they just uh, you know did that for this local HTML file but if we scroll all the way down here it says copyright 2004 to 2005 Microsoft Corporation so this is an official release of WinFS that was um, given out to software developers in 2004 2005 that time frame this was actually specifically um made to run on windows xp they did release a build of windows longhorn which had a couple of the features from winfs in here you'll see that there is this new category called winfs stores with this new icon here they have actually given these their own folder icon to distinguish them from a regular folder to let the user know and to let developers know that this is a winfs store rather than just a regular folder this interface is quite slow and uh, there are a couple of bugs. You can see when I try to double click on this, it doesn't open. This is a uh, store that I just created called uh, Photos. I'm even trying to right click and left click. It's not doing anything. If I go down here to the uh, plus sign and I expand it, you can see that we have a users folder in here. Um, and in here, I can actually go ahead and make a new folder if I want to, but you see it is very, uh, very slow, but like I said, this is just a development kit. This wasn't a uh, finalized feature rich implementation of WinFS, but there is a lot of um, documentation in here that kind of shows you how to, you know, create a WinFS data object, create an item in WinFS, basically tools that developers could use to implement this SDK into their own applications. So that is definitely really cool. And that is what uh, WinFS looks like on Windows XP. So yeah, guys, there you have it. That is a brief look at Windows XPC. I'm not really sure what the deal is with the error glass transparency as I don't see any program in here that allows you to run error glass transparency like, you know, one of those true transparency programs, something like that. I'm not really seeing that in here. Um, but he does say that there is error glass transparency after setup. So maybe it's just a bug that I'm experiencing. Maybe this is something that they still have to work on. 
But guys, that is essentially going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload new videos on this channel, which I do every single week. And also be sure to drop me a comment down below letting me know if you guys have any thoughts on this custom version of Windows. Again, it's called Windows XP PC. Um, you can also actually go on my form site, osforms.net, and contact the user Cosmo on there. He is the um, person who actually sent me this download link for this build. So if you want to um, talk to him, give any feedback to him directly, be sure to go ahead and do that. But as always, guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.